My name is David Arnold, uh, a senior trainer here at Workamajig, and we'll go ahead and get started with our sales and CRM module uh, webinar. Okay. Okay. So when you work, come into Workamajig, uh, again, we have Workamajig or the menu and salesperson. And so we see this as, uh, you know, a, we have a salesperson. Uh, we can then from from that area, that's our today page. Again, that's going to show what I need to do for today. Uh, but we are able to track leads, contacts, companies, opportunities as part of this. And I'll go through each of these. Uh, we'll start out with leads, of course. That's kind of the bottom, right? And then we'll show how to convert that into a contact and company or even into an opportunity. And then finally, once we convert that opportunity into an actual project, uh, how we can convert that. And again, if the contact and company were not a client to begin with, we'll be able to convert them to a company or a client, okay? Now, uh, in our help guide, you know, how do I first get leads in? I guess that's where we can start. Obviously, we can start by doing a manual entry. I have a name, I got a card, right? And I can just simply click in, uh, say, add a new one, or I can hit, hit here, add a new lead, and that's going to ask for this. And so, okay. So I have Jan Stubbins. I probably have a uh, a company name. I would have an email address usually. Something like that. And again, any other information that I can gather from that. I may just have a phone number, right? type of thing. So again, however you get those in and titles. So at this initial site, again, a manual lead is just a series of fields that you're trying to fill in. Okay. I'll go ahead and save that one. There are other ways that we can bring leads in. I'm just going to show you a quick step to the help guide. So we have a feature called web to leads, and this is basically a, a form that they would fill out on your website. And then that could be basically injected into the system when they submit it. And that would capture a lot of that information that I just filled in. And again, it's up to you to kind of create that web page and fill it in for you, okay? We also have an API available. So either using something like Zapier, right? Which would make a connection. Uh, between HubSpot and WorkMajig, for example, that's one way. Uh, or you can actually build out an API that, again, would either you know pull stuff off and push it into WorkMajig, okay? As well as, again, in this case, you could actually pull stuff from WorkMajig into a different system if that's what you need to do. But again, so we have our API available. We also, maybe you went to a convention or something like that and you got a name list, Okay, there's obviously a way to import that in. So again, importing the companies in, and again, I won't go over these, but again, we could have that CSV file and go ahead and uh, bring that in, okay? Okay, uh, for those, what is, what is an API? Basically, that's just a, a, you know, a program language that allows you to pull uh, basically look at fields in the database and pull those out automatically or inject information automatically. Uh, again, uh, your IT team or your uh, uh, production team uh, probably has a good idea of what an API is, okay? Uh, again, not, not covering how we get those in. Again, this is more just how do I get leads into the system? Again, I just did a, a quick one where I just manually entered it in. So we would think that as you're connecting, you know, contacting this person, okay, Jan, I'm going to go ahead and be making conversations. That's usually what it is. I got on a phone call with them, right? Because I, I'm calling them up uh, or I, I'm sending them an email and we can do either of those. So maybe the note that might be, okay, first call. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the message. Date to old, okay, right? And this happens to be for today, but I also at the same time with this conversation, I'm able to say, okay, this is going to be my note with my phone call with uh, Jan, okay? But I also want to make sure I get a follow-up. So I have a couple of different options here. I say save and follow-up versus save. Save is just going to 
basically save this one and I'm done. If I use the save and follow up, that's actually going to pop out a new one where I can do, uh, you know, this is the follow up. And I can date this to say, hey, uh, later, you know, this week or next week or whatever that is, the date that comes in and say, Dang. okay. So again, I'm just, all I'm doing is really just, a, you know, adding information to their record. So again, this one, because it's a follow-up, I'll go ahead and do the save, just the save, and I'll still open up. Now, again, I could technically email those to the, the person as well. So as you see in the conversation, if I click on that and email, again, it's going to grab that contact information, place them in the email. So when I send that out, that would go out. And I'll show you the, uh, a little bit of the setup later. But again, this is the way that we can continue to communicate with this particular person. Now, as I'm working with this person, of course, I'm going to be adding more information. You know, as I talk to them, maybe they say, hey, by the way, you know, I needed some more. Um, sorry, I have, uh, for example, an opportunity with them. You know, they th they're thinking a website. So I might say, you know, website update. That's what they talked about. I can start to look at their budget, whatever that is, right? And maybe they said, oh, you know, we have 5K for it. I don't know what it is yet. Again, these guys are brand new. And again, this is my initial one. So I know that I, I'm going to do web, for example. And so again, I've, I've got this initial opportunity with this lead. Again, I'm just working this and working this again. You know, again, usually I'm doing conversations as far as what I'm tracking with them. Does that all make sense? Okay. And again, as I'm able to add more information to them, I can do that, right? So maybe I find out, you know, a, a, a mobile number. Maybe I find out their assistant. Again, so there's going to be all this information that I can continue to add to as I'm working on that particular lead, okay? So that's how I deal with an, an initial one, okay? Now, as far as my day, I may come to here, right, which is my today page. And you can see that I'm going to see those, you know, here's here's a call I need to make. So I can go ahead and update this call to Bubba Smith, right? I have some other calls, right? First call follow-up, right? So again, I'm going to have to maybe jump into this one and add another update and maybe some new notes to it. So again, we're going to make those available as those dates come about. So we have the open, that's ones that have come in. Uh, any email that's come in to me that I need to be aware of, that's going to be under open until I basically close it out. Uh, today is obviously today, this week, anything that came in and was unread. We also have the ability to favorite items. So again, if I have certain things, uh, certain notes that come in and I say, hey, by the way, make this a favorite because I want to pay attention to it, then again, that's going to show up in my favorite. So again, I can stay on top of it. Okay. Okay. Some of the other things in my today page, again, is my favorite, some opportunities. We haven't talked about that yet, but again, those will show up. Uh, also, I would have my views, and this in the sales effort would be more what I'm dealing with. So in leads, I'm going to say, well, show me all my leads. I may have some neglected leads, right? So uh, I'm sorry, I didn't have really any that I hadn't dealt with. So I'm going to leave that off until we get to contacts, okay? But that's the way we kind of deal with these. Now I can always come to leads. And again, I'm going to see kind of a card of what I've been dealing with recently. Or again, I can always jump to my views to see more, you know, things split out by state or by something like that. Okay. Um, maybe department or, you know, whatever it is that we want to slice and dice that information with. Okay. Now, let's say, for example, Jan has decided to move forward. Maybe it's like, you know, I've been talking to Jan and it seems like we were going to move forward with with something, right? Maybe a, a little a little bit beyond just this initial qualifying, okay? And I can go ahead and click convert. Now, when I convert, it's going to allow me to create a contact record. So obviously, based upon this, I'll create a contact with Jan student, students. Uh, it's going to create a company record. But at the same time, I may be able, if I already know there's a company in, in our system, maybe I can link it to that instead, okay? But kind of that choice. 
The other thing is I have is a create opportunity. So again, at that same time that I'm creating these records, I, I know I have something out there for them and I can go ahead and create that opportunity as well. Okay. Again, do I have to create it? No, <laughs> but again, it's just letting me turn that initial offering, you know, that initial record into something further. Okay. Now, again, all the information that is contained within the lead will be converted over and, and sent over to that. So the, the uh, conversations will all be part of these different records. Okay. Now, if in your, in your agency, you pass it on to somebody else, you can always go ahead and create a conversation and send that off to somebody else. Say, hey, I'm converting this person. Uh, can you please take a look at it? So again, or if you have to you know, make note to uh, the AR department or something like that, whatever that is, okay? I'm not going to do that, but again, that's something else I can add in at this time. So when I go ahead and convert it, it's going to come up with the opportunity because that seems to be the top level. And so here's my opportunity. And you can see that the information, uh, you know, came across, right? So there's my conversation sitting there. There's no effect on me. So they would still come across. If I do show more, I can see that there's been a company created. Okay. And you can see the records are still there, the connection to the contact and also the opportunity. And then my primary contact is also associated with this. And again, showing me the opportunity as well as the connection to the company. Okay. Pretty straightforward on that, right? Um, again, uh, once they're converted from a lead, though, they are that's they're out of that. There's not a way to put them back into a lead area. They would now just be a contact. Now the contacts we can work the same way. So now they've moved up. Uh, if I just go to here and I have my contacts or companies, depending on which way I like to work, I go to contacts. And again, the recent ones I've been working with are here. I also have some pre-formatted views, maybe my neglected ones. Show me everybody I haven't talked to in the last six months or something like that, right? So last activity was on or before a certain date and I go ahead and search for that. And now this is the my list of things to do, right? I'm coming in and saying, okay, I'm going to either send them an email or I'm going to send them, you know, or give them a call, whatever that is and make note of that, okay? So again, not losing any information. We're just kind of moving forward with it. Does that all make sense? Okay. So now I've converted them into this. Again, there's really not a difference between them being a contact and a company. They're not yet a client, right? But I do have this opportunity that I created for them to say, hey, we're working on getting a website. Okay. Now the opportunity itself will have different stages. So let's go ahead and look at that. So as I come in, again, we kind of are working off these numbers here. And so what are these numbers? So uh, it's basically saying labor is going to be about 5K, my total revenue, this is the amount I'm going to bill. Now the next would be if I have production. So I may have production expenses and how much am I going to bill those out at? And I might say that might be another 5,000. You see that my total revenue is 10%, but my margin on that is 20%. And so you'll notice that we'll, we'll get a little different adjusted AGI there because again, my revenue is going to be 10, but I'm taking out about 20% of that. And so again, that's going to deduct that out for my AGI, if that makes sense, okay? The other is, is that I have a probability also set up in here. And this probability has two effects. It could be, again, you use it as just that. What is the chances of, of us winning this, okay? But it also takes into account what is the actual value that we're actually going to win, right? So it's saying 10% of 10,000 basically is what it's trying to say. And that would be, uh, you know, so that's that's why it seems kind of low for my AGI. It's kind of an adjusted rate as opposed to that. So if, again, if I put in 100, then again, that number would would adjust right here, this weighted revenue here versus uh, total revenue and again, adjusted AGI in that, okay? So I would, sorry, that was here. So if I say 10%, as you can see that my, my weighted revenue would be about 1,000 based upon that, okay? That makes sense, all right? 
So again, but for the most part, people are usually, again, you can put in your production amount and if it's media or something like that, now come into your total revenue. Uh, and again, the probability can be used in a couple of different ways. The other thing I'm going to want to add to this opportunity is when do I think I'll close it? Okay. And so when I think I'll close this deal, if it looks like it's going forward, I think I'll close this deal somewhere in January. So I'm just going to say the 15th of January. And then once I close the deal, how many months am I going to be able to bill off of this? Okay. So it's saying basically, you know, it's going to take three months. I can bill this over the course of three months, it might be over the course of two months, depending on the size of the project that you're pitching for. Okay. But the idea is this number can now show up in your revenue forecasting. So we'll take that into account. We'll say, okay, there's going to be two months worth of billing, which would mean 2,500 a month. And that billing would start in January. So if I go look at revenue forecast for January, I would see 2,500. And if I look at it in February, I'll see 2,500. So that's more from the finance side than just seeing this as a salesperson and you're still worried about these numbers as well. But again, that's why we ask you to put in a forecasted close day just so we can start to slot that out. Okay. There'll be other reports also that we'll start to look at when we look at that forecast close as well. Okay. The other things that we're looking at in this is, sorry. So we have, you know, what is the type again, if that changes, I can also look at who are my competitors, a further description, if there's divisions or product proje, uh, products associated with this company that I've set up, I'd be able to select those as well. Now, again, this is just that it's base. If I open up this opportunity, you'll notice that we have a few other fields that we can also adjust here. Uh, first is the stages, right? So it's what stage is this particular one in? So we have initial contact, right? That's where we're working from. Uh, looks like they are interested in working with us. They've requested a proposal. Uh, we've given them the proposal. We got the agreement. We've got the signed contract. And then from there, we would usually convert it over into a project, okay? But I'm just going to leave it at these. You can control what these are, okay? The next is... Op uh, the status, again, I'm working on it, it's closed, it's been delayed, right? So again, you we can control these as well, the name naming of them, but for the most part, we keep it fairly simple. It's open, it's closed, right? It's already, you know, whatever happened to it, it's closed, or it's been delayed in some way, okay? As we work further with it, we, you know, once it's ready to close, we would also have an outcome. So again, we'll come back and fill in what was my outcome? We won it. Uh, it was completely canceled or we lost it to one of our competitors. Okay. And then once we do that, we'll also put in what is my actual close date for this, right? So when did this happen? When did we find out that we were awarded it? When did we get the signed contract? When was it canceled? When did we lose it? So again, this will feed into my reporting, right? Kind of that, uh, you know, the debrief reports. And so we can start to see, you know, let me see all of the opportunities we were we lost and why did we lose them? Because we'll have the outcome description. Why did we lose it? Uh, we'll see the competitors, that type of thing. So again, all of this would be available in a report so we can start to analyze why, you know, what went right, what, what went wrong. That makes sense, okay? And so these outcomes, again, not filled out until we're kind of done with the opportunity. Again, but the status is the way that we'll move things through. Okay. Now with this opportunity, obviously, if I'm working with the individual, uh, most people would say, I kind of need a board that would be better. And we actually do have that. So if I come to salesperson and opportunities, this is my board. So again, this can be separated into people, you know, other people who have control of these, or it's just mine, if that makes sense. Okay. And I can work with them from here. So as I'm working through these, I can click into them. That opens them up, deal with them, put in conversations and whatnot. If they move, need to move to one to the other, again, I got some interest confirmed on this one. I can move that over and you can see how it adjusts my numbers as I go along. Again, open it up, change the conversations, things like that. Okay. Again, pretty straightforward stuff, I think, as far as a CRM. Are there any questions so far? Okay. All right. 
So our next thing that we would look at is not so much probably for in initial contact or interest confirmed. It would be more when it gets into this range where it's saying proposal uh, requested. Uh, this is where we allow you to actually convert your uh, opportunity part into what I call a pseudo project, an opportunity project, okay? So if I go into that opportunity, for example, for Jan, so let me see. Get that one. Oh, sorry. I got one in there. No, <laughs> of course. Okay. Okay. So coming into this one. So as I come into this one, so here's my opportunity. And we'll see that again, maybe this has moved forward quite a bit more. So it went from initial contact to now I'm going to move it to uh, sorry, from initial contact to where we're going to move it into uh, proposal or sorry, proposal requested. Now, once I get to proposal requested, we do make it available that I can use this feature here. It's called enable advanced features. Okay, so all the information I, so that I can go ahead and click on uh, enable advanced features. And what did that do? That's going to allow whoever is going to do this. That could be your sending a note to your project manager to say, hey, I need a proposal, or your, your salesperson is the one doing this. Again, it's kind of up to your team to decide which one clicks on this. And they're basically going to say, hey, I need a project. What type of project is it going to be? And that would be my web, right? Because that's what I think it's going to be. Do I have a specific team that may be involved in that? And again, the, op the project status tends to be, again, we'll make it the first one, but this is, for example, a sales op. Okay, and again, you you know that you can control the sell the the project status. So the idea of this is when I hit set uh, save, it's actually created a project for me. Okay, this acts like any other normal project. You're able to uh, put people on it to do work. You're able to, you're going to see it in traffic, the whole nine yards, right? It's usually an active status when it's coming in here. Although you can change that if you don't like that. But the idea is that that project is there for you to start working on, okay? So, and again, it's not a real project per se. So, but it does have everything else, right? So in the settings, again, it's like, you know, okay, is this going to be time and materials? Where do I get my labor rates, right? Again, these will come from defaults because this is a brand new client and I haven't set them up quite yet, okay? Uh, so again, we have these defaults that would fly in. If you already have certain rate sheets or things like that, you can change this project to that, okay? The idea is that, sorry, uh, when I get to the schedule is that you can now work on getting this planned out. What is it that this person wants? Uh, where, you know, how much labor will it take to, you know, following those instructions? Uh, what is it that they, you know, want? How much time will it take? Uh, maybe even again, starting to assemble some people. Uh, if you are need, in need of comps, this is where I may have uh, maybe an initial set of tasks where, you know, sales development or something like that, where I can put in a task for them, uh, my people to work on some comps. And then again, that's just time tracked against this particular project. Okay. Again, it shows up as an assignment on their board, just like a normal uh, create on, you know, on their today creative again. So they will see that they can start working on it. And again, acts like a normal project, no difference in it. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. But again, we're still kind of working in a little bit of two worlds. The project itself is probably with a project manager or an account manager, right? Kind of working on that side of it. But the salesperson is in charge of the opportunity. So again, that person is kind of sitting here in their opportunity and saying, hey, I still have this opportunity. It's still sitting there. Where is it at? Okay, it looks like we converted it, right? And so again, what's going on that? And again, everything is still there, right? It's still, you know, there's conversations that go with it. There's maybe some files. We're starting to work on the specs for it, those types of things. So again, you may, it's kind of a nebulous bit here, but again, you're usually your sales team is working with your uh, project managers. So hopefully you're scoping it properly and getting the right pricing. So when you actually present it to the client by creating that estimate, whatever that is, and again, you know, 
submitting it for approval, if that makes sense. I must have brought that over as a proof for this one. But again, being able to basically send, send this over uh, as a normal estimate, right? Again, I can print that out. This can be part of your normal proposal deck for your for your uh, potential client, right? Okay. Now, again, like I said, all of these would still be, you know, again, this would show up for that project manager. Again, be treated just like a normal project. Other, although what we would do is we call it Opti, right? So it's name, numbered after the opportunity number. So it's called Opti. In this case, this was the 66th one. So it'd be Opti 0066, okay? Now, if we win the business, okay, this is where we get this make project live. So again, all that work I did, uh, or my project manager did to get the schedule set up, get the estimates there. So again, getting that budget all set up, any files, things like that, okay? Then I can just simply say, make the project live. And when it does that, it's going to recognize that, hey, by the way, Stubbins Associates does not have a client ID, so they're not a client. So I'm going to allow you to do me to create the client right away okay if i need to change anything else usually i wouldn't but there you go if i need to change the project name whatnot it's already been copied over right uh there's a few more things i can get in here right i can also depending on who's in charge right i can make changes to the opportunity itself because I know that sometimes the salesperson is still in charge of it. So at this point is where I can basically shut down my opportunity if I need to. Otherwise, once this is converted over, it's still up to the salesperson to close out that opportunity. Okay. So I'm just going to leave this one alone for now because again, just showing you that it can be done because, because you know, again, some agencies, they're just converting it over and now it's just a project. So when I go ahead and hit save on that, oh, sorry, need a client ID. So, okay. So now it's created a project and it actually shows me that on this opportunity, here's the project that is associated with it now that it's actually been converted over. Does that make sense? So if I click on that, again, that's opening up that main project window. And again, it, acting just like a, it is an, a real project at this point in time. So now I'd be up to the project manager to come in and say, okay, you know, maybe there's some more work for me to do, but then I can go ahead and kick it into production and it would go on its merry way. Again, maybe I have to adjust the dates or things like that. Okay. Okay. Now, now, I didn't do any of the updated the opportunity. So once I've converted over, it is a project. Then of course, there is still that cleanup on the opportunity itself, okay? So again, what do I need to do here? Well, of course I have to do the outcome, right? So that's where it is. So this one actually, we you know signed the contract, we won it. The status of this is it's closed, right? Uh, I'm going to say, what was the outcome? It was awarded. When did that happen? That happened today and Hey, you know, whatever notes you want to put into here, right? To just tell that. So again, it can show up in my reporting to say, hey, show me all the awarded ones. What did we do? So did we go over or under? Did they sign off on what we expected? So on and so forth. So again, make sure you put a lot of notes in there um, because again, we'll be able to see that more and better analyze what, what happened, okay? All right. So again, that's how I'm shutting down the opportunity, right? For that now, again, I've already converted them into a contact and a company. There may be some other things since I've converted them. I need to let perhaps uh, my AR team or my management team uh, know about. Hey, we've just converted Stubbins, and so there may be some things that they need to come in. We've already done the client ID, for example. Uh, there may be some billing things that need to get put into place or some project defaults that need to get put into place. So again, not knowing if you guys turn those over, but there's still some work on, you know, the contact or the company side as needed. Okay. All right. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So that is really kind of the life cycle of an opportunity. Again, we have that lead that came in unqualified. We've qualified it, converted it into a contact, you know, sorry, 
converted it into a contacting company and, and also an opportunity. Again, uh, if the opportunity moved forward, I may convert that company into a client. Okay. And then from there, again, that opportunity can be converted into a pseudo opti project. And then once the opti pro opportunity, that opti project seems to go forward, again, I can convert it into a live project. Few adjustments, but then it's, it's a live project. Okay. Now, who can I create opportunities for? Again, new business, right? New business with new clients, new business with old clients, right? Again, we don't differentiate. If you have to pitch to get the business, then it's an opportunity. Makes sense, right? Otherwise, it may, you know, again, I have an old client that's coming through. You may look towards what we call our project request forms, right? So we have a project request where I can come in and say, hey, I need a new project. And again, what is it for? They need a new website. It's this is it's not an opportunity. We're not pitching. They said, "Hey guys, can you update our you know our website?" I'm just picking the client and doing that next. Or the client themselves could potentially just log in and create that request for you. Okay, there's not a real need to go through the opportunity. We have some that don't use leads, right? Everybody's a contact. That's absolutely fine, right? I create a contact, create a company. I can still create the opportunity as well. Okay. So again, just depends on what best fits with what you guys are doing. And again, leads we always see as unqualified, you know, again, it's, I just have a name and an email address and a phone number and that's it. Okay. Uh, but beyond that, again, we've already kind of qualified them. So that's why I'm going to make them a client. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So for opportunities, what's the difference to make a project live and entering opportunity into a new project on, under project settings? Oh, I see. Okay. So um, let's go to the project. Okay. So I think that's what you're talking about. Okay. So I have this project. And I think you're saying under here where I can say there's an opportunity. What's the difference with this? This is more of a backlink. So if I created this opportunity or this project and then, oh yeah, that was part of an opportunity. This is just simply a list of opportunities for that particular client that I can link it backwards. Uh, I can basically, you know, if I click onto it because it's already created for it, right? It's already there. Then it may create a new one. But again, there, there's not really a difference per se. It's just more how am I accessing the data, okay? Moving on into a new project, which is the better work for it? Does the new project include acquisition costs for the from the linked opportunity? Okay, so again, that acquisition cost. So again, we would say, you know, when I converted it, so the opportunity itself, okay, there's going to be a couple of ways of handling that, right? So it's a great question. So again, as a salesperson, again, how do I track my time, right? Now, some would have a single project that is mine, John Arbuckle's sales project. And every time I get a new lead, I may put in a task that I can just dump my time against. And I say, here's the, a new task and it's for Stubbins Associates. So all my time that I do, I log to that Stubbins Associate task. The other way is I just have a single task that just says sales effort, whatever that is, right? And then in my time entry, I may say this was, I was talking to Stubbins, that type of thing. Okay. Now, once it's converted into an opportunity or that opti project, how do I deal with that? Right. So again, I'm tracking time entries here. So again, that opportunity has its own schedule. And again, I'm putting time towards that, that opportunity or towards this kind of opti project. So that time is already tracked against it. Once I convert it, that's where I would have that, you know, do I, bill this time? Do I mark it as bill? Do I transfer it off? Again, that would be more of a decision once you get that project live. Some leave it and mark it as billed. Some leave it on the project and write it off. And why do they write it off? It was sales effort, right? So they have a reason for that write-off. It's sales effort, but it's still expense against that project, even if it's in the opportunity phase. Okay, as far as uh, resourcing, 
Great question. For those Opti projects, there is no difference other than the project name. So if I come into, for example, uh, you know, staff schedule, I don't know if I have any in here. I'm really sorry. Uh, they would show up here as well. So it's just another meeting. Sorry, I don't have anything for John Arbuckle. I don't have anything set up. But it would just it would just be instead of showing me the project number, it'd say Opti with the project number. So that'd be the only difference. So, but it it shows up just the same as any other normal project. Okay. Okay. I have another question that says, you know, how can company benefit from the CRM if they don't have a sales team? Well, again, uh, there usually is a sales team. That's usually the boss. Right? So uh, again, how are they tracking it? They may just be using Outlook to do this. Again, we're just saying you can keep it within work and Majig if you need to. Okay. So again, I can still, I may not use the lead side of it. Does that make sense? I may not use the leads, but I am going to definitely use the contacts, companies, and opportunities. So again, when I go out and talk to somebody and they tell me something and it looks like we can, you know, is that something we can work on? Then I may create an opportunity for that. And just to let you know, again, I can have three or four opportunities open for a particular company. We don't care. Again, it's just an opportunity in our book, right? It's just, again, I'm pitching one, you know, a website. I'm also pitching for their business cards. I'm also pitching for, you know, some, uh, some ad revenue. Right. So again, it just depends on what we're doing. Right. Okay. Okay. So for example, you're doing a, a request for proposal instead of a direct ask for from a company, uh, would best practice be to make a full project non-billable once it's live? I'm I'm not sure I understand that one. And so, so uh, why would I make the project, if it's going to be a billable project, why would I suddenly make it non-billable? So again, I'm, I'm still thinking the opportunity or the Opti project uh, that I've converted over might be the ticket. Again, the Opti project is not billable. So again, even though I'm working those hours and putting expenses in against it, it's not something that would show up for an invoice. It's not until it gets converted into an actual project. Otherwise, it'll just be all considered uh, overhead. That makes sense. Okay. Now, any, any other, D did that answer your question? You say yay or nay, <laughs> right? Okay, <laughs> thanks. All right, so, and that said, the overhead bid answered it, thanks. Okay, all right, so now, we, so we've kind of talked about the workflow, but now what are some of, uh, some of the things that we can do in setup, right? So obviously, how do I get this ready? And so what are the things that can come into play? So under admin manager, system setup, and again, of course, there's security rights, okay? So the first off is when I come into the security, I'm just kind of scrolling down, not under projects, although that may become of it. It's this contact management bit. So first off is, you know, use, right? So can I use contacts and uh, companies and leads, right? Am I able to merge those? Can I view things that don't belong to me? So if I created it, of course I can see it, right? But can I work on your stuff? Do you want to protect it, my stuff from you, right? Do I want to protect that? So those are the settings that we have in here. So again, it usually revolves around, you know, can I create them, right? So can I add them? Uh, can I work on ones that are not mine? Can I, ed can I just view them or can I edit them, right? And can I delete them or can I merge them? So again, that kind of goes through uh, leads, contacts, and companies. And again, so you kind of can control what they do, okay? We also have the idea of activities. Again, can I use them? Can I edit them? Can I see the ones that aren't assigned to me? So again, it's kind of this, you know, you can restrict it down so I can only see my stuff or you can make it a little bit more open so others can see it. So it just depends on how you kind of run your sales team or again, do I want stuff in leads available to everybody to see? Once it of course becomes a project, then it's kind of project concepts that are dealing with that. But this is more having to do with those records like the contact record, the client record, things like that, okay? Or the lead record, okay? So those are the security rights there. The next thing we have, is of course some of the transaction preferences. Again, we have uh, under con uh, contact management, 
we have the idea of folders. So again, we can kind of silo things away, your leads versus my leads, right? And how would we silo those out? So let me just duplicate a tab here and I can go to, uh, again, uh, sorry, salesperson and I can go to contacts and I may have here, it says manage folders. So I can actually, I have clients and I have new leads, right? So I separate those out. And when I do that, I can say what security group can view this folder and what security group can actually add or edit things within this folder, right? Does that make sense? So again, I could have East Coast, West Coast, right? North, Northern state, <laughs> Southern state, right? Bob versus Jim, right? So again, however you want to set up these folders, again, that's a way to separate things out. So I know that sometimes, you know, you know, again, the boss has some leads. I don't want other people to see that. I pop it into a folder and that folder is only viewable to me, if that makes sense. And then again, nobody else can see anything that's within that, okay? Uh, if I create a project with a company, for example, this may be a leader, or sorry, if I have a company that's in a folder that I can't see, of course, I still see the project. That makes sense. But when I try and click on the company record to see company info, it will not let me because that company is not in a folder that I can see. So there is some of that, some of that restriction. So again, just be aware of that. But again, that may be a way that you can separate things out. Okay. The other thing that we look at in system setup, so again, that was transaction preferences. The next is going to really be under connections. And so this is basically that incoming email and perhaps even the SMTP settings. Now, I don't have anything set up, but again, I can send out an email from the system. That person can hit reply. That will come back into this particular location and either send that response back into my bell or as an email to me. Either way, it can be controlled or to others, depending on how you set it up. But that's the incoming. The outbound would be, again, if you're on our server, this matters because, again, when we send out an email, it's going to be coming from workmajig.com. Well, that's not abc.com. So that's going to be a domain mismatch. And most mail will see that as spam and deal with it accordingly. So this is a way of obviously it's coming off of our, uh, we actually route it through your mail server. So it comes off of the abc.com mail server. That makes sense. Okay. There's, you know, before this, you may just do a DKIM record and that's enough for your team, right? But still, I would recommend that you're setting up this one. So again, I can send an email out, it routes back in, it threads in against that lead or that opportunity or, you know, as you know, from the other things. Uh, and then again, if you're having problems with it getting caught in spam at, at the contact level, then you may look towards doing either DKIMs or a DKIM record onto your mail server or actually making the SMTP connection. And again, if you have questions on these, uh, send that to support at workamajig.com. We can help you get that set up. But again, that's in, in the support group. So, or sorry, in the support guide as well. All right. All right. So actually, so that's kind of the setup for it. Uh, again, those are the main ones. Again, that transaction preference, do I use leads or, or sorry, do I use folders or not? That's a way of getting things across. Uh, then, you know, security settings, um, you know, do I have access to them? The connections for the email, those are the big, the main ones that we'd look at. There are obviously some, uh, perhaps some uh, project numbering and things like that, that we may look into. Um, but for the most part, th those are the main uh, courses uh, that we'd be uh, looking towards. Okay. Now, if you say, you know, for returning clients, I may not do an opportunity and I may do a project request form instead. And again, that's a whole nother topic. But again, we do have that under tracking and that's a defined project request. And again, basically setting those up to say, okay, when they come in or when a salesperson clicks on it, what does it do, right? So we can route those around to different people, okay? Until it becomes a project. A little different than an opportunity. That's more of, you know, please do it, right? <laughs> they are, you know, you're already done, okay? Okay. When you're putting in a project, so I go, uh, couldn't it be for the sales initiative, create new, uh... okay. So a person asked, okay, so if I have a project schedule and the opportunity, so again, we may pre-program that. So when I grab it, I have that sales effort is sitting on top there. 
Okay. So just like any projects, they're saying, well, okay, I start out with this brand new project and it's kind of blank or it has limited schedule, right? So this is still an opportunity or whatever. I have that, you know, concept or the proposal uh, pass in. So once I have that initial in, of course, I can come in and say, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I know this is a website. So I can go ahead and say, okay, copy in this, you know, copy everything in. And it's just going to create that, you know, add that set of tasks into it. So that's a way to say, I'm going to have a simple sales effort project as a template. And then from there, I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, add the tasks of the appropriate uh, template at that time. So again, just becomes a normal project, okay? Okay, is switching uh, CRM for, to, uh, from a different CRM <laughs> uh, system? Again, we would have the contact, again, the, the contacts and whatnot, if you can export it to CSV, first name, last name, that type of thing, that's just an import of those records. Uh, that would be doable. The projects that you've created in the old system versus the new, you know, versus Workamajig, that's kind of going to be a, a case by case how you, we would deal with those. Again, if it's really old and you haven't dealt with it, why put it into Workamajig? Uh, if it's kind of a moving forward and we're working on it, then again, I may work on just having that template available or, or adding uh, that that schedule as I'm working on it. That makes sense. Okay, now one more thing I didn't exactly talk about, but again, when I have that opportunity and actually convert it, okay, I talked to you through the converting it from a project, okay? So again, I said, hey, I have this project, I'm going to convert it over. But we can also, here I have this opportunity here. Um, let's see if I have one that's not done. Okay. When I enable advanced features, you might not have noticed, I can also do a campaign. So again, if I know that this thing, this pitch is going to involve more than one type of project, it is possible to say, okay, create a campaign. And so when I do that, it's going to create an opti campaign, if that makes sense. And then from there, I would be adding in the project excuse me, I need a new, you know, it's going to be a logo plus a corporate website, uh, plus, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> say a video production or something like that. And so again, I'm just adding those in. And so this is all treated, as you can see, Opti 64, Opti 64, that's the 64th one. And so again, the campaign is now uh, Opti 64, and then the projects are associated with it. Once I convert this one, these all become kind of live projects and we'll renumber them to the appropriate project numbering. So again, if you have multiple, you know, an opportunity itself may be two or three or four different projects, uh, that's up to you guys. And then you can create a, 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 like I said, you can create a campaign from that. We also have the ability to create a planning project. So if you're pitching to just get, you know, hey, we'll give you 20 hours, of, uh, you know, 20 or 40 hours a month of this type of thing. We also have the ability to, you know, have that pitch go with a planning project as well. Okay. And that is really all I have for you today. Uh, again, thank you very much for your time. Again, if you have further questions, support at workamajig.com. Uh, your account manager would be happy to, answer those questions. Or if you have something specific for me, just say for David and uh, uh, they'll forward it on to me. But for the most part, everybody will be able to help you if you have those questions. If you have, you know, you haven't implemented this yet uh, with your team and they're looking to, again, just ask for that training uh, to, to help you implement it. Okay. Again, support at workingwithjig.com. Um, once I get this done, I'm sure we'll have links into this. Again, I had some of that was in the help guide. So again, we had web to leads, API overview, that type of thing, the import files. Uh, we also have, of course, under salesperson. Again, these are all, you know, dealing as a salesperson, that's in our guide as well. Okay. And some other videos uh, associated with that. Okay. All right, I'll stay for just a couple more minutes if that's what you guys want. Uh, 
thank you very much for your time and uh, have a great holiday. Um, again, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. Not closing out quite yet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I did not show you the import functionality. So again, import functionality, same for everything. Under admin manager, there's import data, uh, just depending on what you're going to bring in, clients, contacts, uh, leads are down here somewhere right? under L, I think. There we go, leads. Uh, we're just looking for email address, first name, last name, and then really just about any contact information, uh, you can import that in against it. So usually a CSV file works best, but it can also, you know, that's typically the format we want. Okay. And again, uh, if you have certain files, again, we can work on getting a file ready for you. So if you're coming from another system and it, uh, exporting out, again, hopefully you can create a custom report in that one with the right fields. Uh, so the field names can match up. So you can just simply save it to CSV and import it directly. But otherwise we can set up a template. We don't care about the order these come in as long as email, first name, last name are kind of to the left. We're okay with that, <laughs> right? It doesn't have to be exactly the first column, so to speak. Uh, so again, that you know, just make sure whatever's coming out of your old system, we may have to copy and paste the data into a pre-formatted uh, Excel sheet before converting to CSV. Okay. All right. Uh, as far as the recording, again, we get it, uh, we process it, we'll put it up on YouTube. Uh, if you registered for this, uh, you'll actually, I believe you get a notification saying, hey, the, the recording's available, okay? But if not, again, it'll be usually up uh, with the holidays. Uh, it may be next week that it gets up onto our YouTube channel, but otherwise, okay? Um, I should have the link actually done uh, sometime today myself. So again, if you don't see it on the website, uh, just you know send an email to support and we'll get you the link.